York, New York, big city of dreams. I'm coming, coming, coming straight out. New York, New York, big city of dreams. The Nick of Time Podcast. What's going on? It's the JLS from Nick of Time Show here. Give you that Nick's talk. Just in the nick of time. It is now week two being back from the Rooney. Band is back together. I have, I have a better system now on how to introduce people. <laughs> I got it. All right. So, bet. Here we go. Right corner of the screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's Miss Black Girl Magic herself. Okay, still. Left corner of the screen. Don't have any, don't. This, this is where it gets interesting. <laughs> no, left corner of the screen. <laughs> left corner of the screen. Bottom left oh, you, corner. You, the, you get me right after that is where it goes down. The bottom now, left so. corner of the screen mm-hmm. <laughs> is your man. <laughs> the famous blue check coming. It used to be Kathy, but I think he's your Edson now. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, Edson now. <laughs> <laughs> blue check coming, my Whoa. guy. It's a Sean. What up, what up, what up? All right. And the bottom right corner of the screen is the man, the myth, the legend, the guy with stats and the facts. Ryan G in the building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, now let, let's get to it. Let's get to it. So first and foremost, I think sort of a slow news week, but it's been an interesting rumor week when it comes to the okay. Knicks news. Would y'all agree? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And ain't it always interesting when it comes to this? Yeah, but it, it comes in waves. This is especially interesting. It comes in waves. But <laughs> here, here was an interesting thing. So uh, Chad Ford, he went on a podcast called the Locked and Warriors podcast, and he made a certain statement about the Knicks trading up for Lamella Ball, and it says something like this. I think there's one team that I see out there that might be desperate to get up wow. and really make some buzz, and that's the Knicks. Wow. <laughs> and if the Knicks don't get that number one pick in the draft, just given to the trajectory of the franchise over the years, I could see them having some assets. They'll still probably have a fairly high lottery pick, packaging all of that together to try to get up to make a big splash. And if there's a guy that sort of makes that sense in New York, it's LaMelo Ball. So pretty much he's saying we're desperate enough Wow. To trade for the middle ball because we all know a point guard is needed in New York. Yeah, most definitely. Are you offended, Edson? I heard you say whoa like 30 times. Yeah, because I'm like, <laughs> first off, I mean, yes. Where's the lie? We need a point guard, but like, desperate. Is there no lie there. We need a point guard, but desperate enough. I mean, it's, it's, it looks at two things. It's like, okay, the middle ball, why is that? Why is trading up from a desperate move? You know, and I mean, nobody likes to be called desperate. I mean, we know what the franchise looks like, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's what I mean. I mean, listen, desperate is desperate, man. We desperate for a point guard. <laughs> right. Kathy okay. looks stressed. <laughs> <laughs> just wait my nah, turn. It's, 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 turn. it's, it's, it's just like, waiting my like, turn. Because when LaMelo Ball comes to New York and he plays here for a few seasons, she'll be all when, right. When, when. So it's safe to say be, Ryan you know, is on the side of. We Get should him. be desperate enough to trade for LaMelo. Is that what you're saying? First of all, I want to say never lost. <laughs> Number one, I want to say that first. Okay. <laughs> Secondly, I mean, look, according to, you know, the, um, the scouting reports and things like that, like he definitely seems like the best point guard in the draft. Best? Okay. I, don't, I wouldn't say the best. The point guard in the draft? Yes, the best. I wouldn't yes, say the best. The best point guard in the draft. The best overall prospect is Anthony Edwards, but he's a wing. When it comes to point guards, the solo ball seems like he's the top prospect. And, and I mean, and let's be clear. Let's huh? be clear too. That's even been debatable because I've been hearing that Anthony Edwards. Some people think Anthony Edwards has been a little bit ups and downs. Some people might say Lamelo is. So it's been up and down. So yeah, and I mean, like, come on, the dude has handle. He's an elite passer. Mm. He got good court vision. Mm. So I mean, and I, I mean, after I, I can, that, I, huh? It's, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, there's something being left off. And he scored being left off again. Just, you didn't. You didn't continue, off. Ryan. You didn't. You stopped right there. You let didn't. Me, let, me, let me continue. You want to finish? Let me continue because yeah. I mean, I mean, right there, like what a point guard is supposed to do. He already got it. 
he, he can run you want to be you want to be a little bit more specific L- let me let me finish though mm. let me finish okay. He's being specific. So, so right now, when it comes to things that a point guard is supposed to do, Lamella Ball is pretty much up there already. Running off up there, I think. I think that's vision, an exaggeration. Can, yes, can pass great. He yes. has a he's a good ball handler yes. already. Right there, those are the basics for point guard. Right, right there, he already got. It. Now, when it comes to shooting, yeah, he's not a great shooter, but I mean that. But I mean, you can work on shooting and improve on that. That's not something that's that should be a deal breaker. Yeah, I don't think his catch and shoot numbers is as bad as people think. He's a, like, exactly his pull up three hasn't been that good, you know. But uh, the catch mm-hmm. and shoot three is not good. Catch and shoot threes have been not bad, not terrible. Yeah, and I mean, like, and, and I mean, there's been there's been various examples of players that when they come into the NBA, they were bad shooters, but then as they, you know practiced and over time they got they got better so i mean why can't the same be for Lamelo ball i mean look damn what about his defense that's see this is at least i'm not getting to defense i'm talking about (laughs) (laughs) that was gonna be my next that was the question was was, i was just wait i was trying to give ryan a chance to finish and then you know but kathy already do we need defense i mean i mean you know I mean, yo, even look at his, even look at his brother Lonzo. Cause that, I would hope that 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 is not the truth. You don't really believe that, Jay. <laughs> 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 I'm troll for one second. Just let me troll. Okay, proceed. Because is his brother Ryan, you said. Yeah, cause I mean, look at Lonzo. People thought that dude's jump shot was broken, but this, but this, it is broken. Not this nah, season. Nah, yeah, he, he got it together this season. He got it together. So I mean. We in Corona. It's, it's we don't not, remember what it looked it's like now. It's not possible for Lamelo Ball to, <laughs> and and there's also various other shooters like I can name like Sean Marion and yeah, no, like that. I mean, where like they jumped over broke. You can work, were, you huh? can work on mechanics. That's what I'm saying. Yes. And work on mechanics. There's a couple of things with this defense, right? Mm-hmm. And yes, his his natural ability I think is obviously there, but how high do you think his ceiling is? Meaning leveling up and i think one of the main things i'm thinking about is his defense and his ability to commit the defense well 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 here's mm-hmm. I, i'm going to quote my guy jake from the paint because jake from the paint he, he he um we interviewed him and he was our resident draft guy and the way he okay. put it was a he he buys the shot coming because of the touch you know the touch on the floater is good yes absolutely. so he, he buys a shot coming along and when it comes to the defense, he feels like he's never really been challenged on the defensive end, and that's why he's picking bad habits. And that's because he know, doesn't know where to go yeah, or where to stand. He's always he been gets the man, lost he's always, every time. He's always kind of been the man on the team carrying the load. So um, he's he carries the load offensively, but defensively he gets right, lost. Right, right. And there's no there's, personally he gets <laughs> lost. Like he gets <laughs> lost on on placement and where he's supposed to be. Listen, listen, <laughs> like, like that's on him. That's we not necessarily on the rest of the team. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> like I can he like, can find I his way. Though, this is why you need better mic. Better mic, Ryan. What would you say? <laughs> No, I said no. I said that. Where's, 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 where's the gunshot? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, gun what shot, I'm saying? Gun shot, gun shot, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna turn his vocals up. That's fine. That's fine. Go ahead. All right. What I'm saying is that getting lost on defense can't be said a lot about. Uh, can be said about a lot of the prospects. So I mean, that's not something that you know should be held against them when you can hold that against a whole bunch of prospects. Mm. Yeah, but then there there are other, there are a lot of other prospects who don't necessarily have the hype that comes around LaMelo who are actually better than LaMelo but won't get what? that um, yeah, yeah. Gun my gun friend gun. just put me on my friend well, my players. friend just put me on to um Cole Anthony who just declared for the draft. And if I had to look at him, his highlights versus LaMelo, I'm kind of going with him. Nah. No, I'm, I'm going with him. I'm no. going with him more than I'm going no. with Lamelo. <laughs> <laughs> not not with the pieces the Knicks no. have. I don't know. First of all, hold on, Cole Anthony. Yeah, break, break it down. Cole yeah. Anthony is break not a real point guard. He's a college. but Lamelo is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Lamelo <Okay. laughs> is. Lamelo is a natural I'll, point guard. I'll, I'll have to say court uh, that's the one. Cole Anthony's I think that's one of his strengths. Is not no nah. weird year 2020. <laughs> yeah, the one thing I'll say about Lamelo is. His, <laughs> His his court vision, his his court vision is good versus versus um Anthony's court vision. Yes, he has that he has that upper hand. But what he has on the what he also has on the upper hand versus um ball is he has a better shot. Yes, he yeah. has a better drive to the basket. He has um good defensive abilities. 
He has he kept off our defense. So what are you yeah, talking about? He, no, he no no he can hold it. He can hold he a man lost. when playing man to man. He can hold he can hold his man. There are times where he does get lost, but he can play good man to man too. Okay. He gets he gets lost. Yes, but he can play better man to man than your man. The ceiling <laughs> of a six five point guard in Lamella Ball. Is yes, way he has height. He has a he has a height advantage. Cole Anthony, who's not a pure point guard. And is not going to nearly get. But I mean, just to say, the same ball. way you want to give ball, ball like the same way you want to give ball, the same way you want to give ball the ability to 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 learn and grow is the same way I'm giving it to Cole. Yo, you know what it is? And there's, there's certain things you can't teach, and that's and that's the thing about Lamelo. Like, there's certain things you can't. Yeah, you can't teach, teach you can him how to have a better shot. You cannot teach you, that man how to have a better shot. All three teach, of their shots is a, nasty. There's, there's examples in NBA history of getting taught how to get a better shot. But when it comes to court vision, you either have it or you don't. <laughs> and that's the biggest difference it's, between LaMelo and everybody else. I don't, I don't think his – I mean, he doesn't have LaMelo's um, court vision, but his – And the way the Knicks are set the, up with RJ – Between – The size difference, and, too, is a big his, 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 his size difference – I would take his size difference more than everything else you're saying because I think he – I think his court vision is not that bad. I think LaMelo has a better job at hitting – People in particular in the places, pocket, the crazy passes um, that people, yes, that he can see yes. before anybody else can see. Yes, he has he has an, a great passing ability, but and he has a good size. But in in Cole's defense, like he can still pass the ball, he can still drive, he can still shoot. <sighs> Cole is I, but he's not. I don't. I don't. I personally don't want him on that. I've, say, I've, say that then. Say that. He's all right. He's, he's not, right. he's not who you want, he's but right. he's say that. Say that instead. Say that instead. Melo's basketball IQ is But I'm taking Melo. I would give him the advantage of that with the basketball IQ. I'm definitely yeah. giving Melo the advantage on that. He has that, but I still think he's overhyped. And, and I'll say this. So I still think he's hyped. I still think it's 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 y'all giving him way more, but I mean I wouldn't be proving right, so, so, so. And so okay, would you trade? I know I already know Cavs answer to this. Yes. Because <laughs> cause you exactly. know the Knicks right now possibly picking six. Who knows these new lottery odds? Right. Mm-hmm. Um a mellow, very high possibility he'd be a first round pick. I mean first uh the first pick of the draft. Mm-hmm. Right. In right. the draft, draft has him anywhere between one and three. So if he's one and you're six, would you want to trade up for Lamelo? What are we losing? Because here, yeah, here's the thing. There's only been six times in history when someone has traded their first round pick. Only six. Yeah. So it's, it does not happen a lot. I don't mm-hmm. think it's gonna happen this pick either. Yeah. But, you know. And the the, la- the, yeah. <laughs> the last time that happened was uh, Markel Fultz. <laughs> And that was a flop. Jason Tatum, that was a flop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but a, a lot, a lot of it depends on what pieces people need. Of course, you know the idea is like when you draft, you pick the best person in the draft, and you work around that. Mm-hmm. But for example, like the, going back to the Michael Jordan draft, he wasn't picked first. Why? Because people needed a big man. Yeah. You know, so it's like I could see it happen. I don't think it's gonna happen this pick, what, but which leads us if it were to happen, which leads us to the Warriors because if the Warriors ended up. Picking him first, who's to say they really need him? Okay, the pick, right? Because they got Clay and Steph, right? Mm-hmm. And if we maybe we swing the trick for the Warriors, but here's the thing: historically, most of the times, if you're trading, if you're swapping picks, so we swap the six for pick for the first. Usually, that involves a future first as well. Yeah, absolutely. And that's when it gets sticky because next year's mm-hmm. draft. Is I. <laughs> I don't think we should do it. So, yes, I, I, this one was loaded with point guards. No, this one is, is loaded with point guards. Next year's draft, the talent level is it's higher. higher. Yeah. Um, I don't think we should do it. Agreed. I, mean, I don't think we should trade up. I don't think we should trade up because I think, again, it's going to be too expensive for us. Not just financially, but picks. And like you said, that next draft is going to be crazy. I, I, don't, I don't think we should do it. Yeah, I mean, me personally, like, I would go with the odds. You know, like, if we get if we get one to three, all right, great, pick them. But like, if we get like six, seven, eight, then I'm like, let's see what we get, what we can get at exactly, six, seven, eight, exactly. and, just, and just prepare for that next draft and see, you know, who's coming out and if we can get somebody 
who can really help the team and just build the team year by year. What if it's you go, Ryan? Let your man go. <laughs> Nah, but that, 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 that doesn't mean that doesn't mean you're not, gonna risk, you're not gonna risk it all for your man's. That's crazy. What is, okay, what no, is, I, I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna build a team. That's why you're I'm, not gonna risk I'm, it all I'm, for I'm, your man. You're not gonna trade up for your man. I'm, I'm not doing it for anybody in this draft. Okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so you don't really like him like <laughs> that. I do. That's my top choice. But I'm not gonna. Ri- I'm not gonna give up. He top two and he ain't even two and you ain't even trading ain't for him. Top two, not even two. <laughs> <laughs> That's a gunshot right now. <laughs> I, I rather I rather save those picks. I just I, I rather save those picks to either build the team slowly or to package them in a deal for a superstar to bring them in if possible. Now what? Wait, what if? What if? What if? You don't see the potential. I got. I got, I got, I got question though. What if we don't do it for the next year? What if we do this year's first and mm-hmm. first and two years from now? I'd be more inclined to do it. <laughs> but is that even something that's that they're even thinking about? Are they are they thinking that far ahead and not giving away next year's? Who the Knicks? Yeah. Are they thinking that far ahead? I mean, it's possible. Yeah. It's possible. I mean, if you're looking at so, if Scott Perry's still in charge, he might be more inclined to try to make himself look good and make a big splash this season. But also, right. on top of that, you never know how much power the new capologist is going to have as well. So if he has some input, he might try to be a little bit conservative. So it depends on the power structure. Uh, it depends on a lot. It's a lot of ifs. It's a lot of it's ifs. A lot of ifs. It's a lot of ifs. That, that's the thing. It's a lot of ifs and maybe. Personally, this whole scenario is, is uh, it's just kind of like speculation. You know, it's, it's speculation. Right. Like, I don't. Of course, of course. There's no real mm-hmm. like, ooh, I knew a guy who said this and the Knicks go. It's speculation. <laughs> it's speculation. We're trying to figure it out. But I might be I might be inclined to do it if it's um two years from now, first round pick. Um I have seen some examples of like some of uh of draft swaps happening where they take lower pick and like Maybe the, maybe the Clippers pick or Dallas pick too. I might mm-hmm. be inclined to do that if they would take that. If 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 they, if they gonna take that, I would definitely then do it. If it's number one pick though, I I don't see it. I really don't see it. Yeah, the number one pick's gonna be tricky. Yeah, I never really. Yeah. But I would definitely be down for that. Yeah, but I mean, like, if any team is stupid enough to be like, all right, they'll take our our first round pick this year, and, and, and then the Clippers pick or the Mavericks pick, I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, take that. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> And interestingly, interestingly enough, the Warriors have done some stupid things before. Because in 1993, the Warriors ended up uh, trading their first round pick, <laughs> and they were trading number three pick in Pen- Penny Hardaway <laughs> for Chris, for Weber, Chris Weber, right? Weber in future first round picks. So maybe that's a good omen for us. <laughs> <laughs> you think they'll be that stupid to maybe that they'll man? be that stupid? Uh-uh. <laughs> oh man. And then, History then, repeats itself. So one more thing I want to add, though, Go ahead. because um, you know, in New York, you know, to play in New York, you have you have to have a lot of you know, you have to have major cojones. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And that dude Mello got major cojones. Mm. I feel mm. like he'd be able to take the pressure too, which is also why I'm on the Mello bandwagon on drafting him and bringing him to New York. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he he, he definitely has. Um, I did an in, I did an interview with CP, and he was talking. He was talking about how much he's been born with the pressure and like he's still really humble even with the media uh following him around the way he does he kind of acts like it's kind of normal so someone who's kind of used to being followed around like that i mm-hmm. think he would be you know fitting seamlessly in new york um so i think he, he seems like he'd be able to work hard I, i'm more worried about his dad than anything else <laughs> <laughs> Well, Never lost. His father's the reason why he's able to Word. <laughs> handle that pressure. You, know, right. you got a you got a dad like mm-hmm. that. Let's, be let's transition though. Speaking of ball, pause, right? Pause. pause. I said it, I saw your face. I said pause before. You did, you did, you did, you did. <laughs> right. There's another ball brother that maybe they might he might shake loose. I, I saw this on YouTube somewhere. I forgot who I saw, but I was like, yo, this is actually a good um scenario here because you know Brandon Ingram 
They probably want to try to sign him at all costs. Mm-hmm. Uh, knowing that, you know, they kind of lowballed them. They didn't, they didn't, they offered everybody, everybody got traded to the Pelicans, got an extension except for, for Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram turned mm-hmm. around in balls. Mm-hmm. They ended up keeping Drew, uh, Drew Holiday, who cost his massive amounts of money. Right. And he also kept Lonzo Ball. So you figure, you know, to sign Ingram, they might be willing to part with Drew Holiday or, or even Lonzo Ball. Mm-hmm. So my question to you is, would you be able, would you think you can do trade for Lonzo Ball in that scenario? I mean, he, I mean um, he has one year left in his contract. So he's going to become a restricted free agent in 2021. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, if, if, I, if, if things fall through, like, say, for example, you know, this draft goes by, the Knicks, the Knicks aren't able to draft a point guard, and the Knicks are in desperate need of somebody to fill that role, I would consider Lonzo Ball because I feel like this year he's taken a step in the right direction. You know, his, his shooting has gotten better. Um, if, if you leave him open at the three-point line, he's knocking it down as opposed to, you know, bricking back when it, back in the Lakers days. So he's a better <laughs> shooter now. I've always liked his court vision. I always liked the way he ran an offense. So I like that about him too. So it's like, if push comes to shove and the Knicks don't have a point guard, I would consider him. It's funny because I feel like his averages went up too. I feel like he averaged like six assists, six rebounds, and double digits in points by the end of the season once he started getting his mm-hmm. game. So that's an interesting look. He's definitely playing better. He's definitely playing better. I just feel like anything anything that brings him there has to probably involve Frank, I would think. Mm. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do that then. Yep. I wouldn't want to do that then. We want. Frank. I think I actually might do that though. I might do Frank. it. You, you might would, give him you Frank. Would, you would trade. You would trade. I, I would. Really. I mean, Frank's Frank is a good defensive point guard, and that's what I love about him. But Lonzo, you don't really lose anything on defense much. You know, it's it's not like a huge drop yeah. off. In defense. Right. Okay. But it'll probably be Frank and something else, for sure. How much better do you see Lonzo getting though? Ah. Uh, I mean, the possibility is there. I mean, he's going to average double figures for you, and he's going to get you at least probably seven assists a game. Yeah. Right. And, and provide good defense. It's better than what we have now, a point guard. So, I mean, <laughs> you need, their roles will be Start a, 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 a starting, though? Yeah, he's a starting point I guard. Feel like he's a, yeah, no, but I'm, I'm, that's what I'm saying. That, like, what, what do you want from your starting point guard? I feel like he'd be a solid. A solid starting point guard. Solid. Not me. Not all star. But um, yeah, really good, decent in everything. Well, Frank would yeah, be, like a well rounded. Yeah, well, very well rounded point guard. Well, Frank would be solid backup, maybe. Frank oh, starter, I'm not sure, but, depending on the lineup. And I have, he has a lot of work to do too. But um, but then we talk about specials. we have to get rid of Frank. Huh? Though. Right, but we told him we'd have to get rid yeah. of Frank, though. Mm-hmm. So it's not like he'd still be there. So let's we have Lonzo starting. Who's backing him up? Who's backing him up? I'm not sure. It's, yeah. it's, so it's like I it feel, won't be again, DSJ because we traded him. <laughs> yeah. right. So, uh, right, right, right. And so I think it, I think it'd be a good move, but then it's like okay, we move this piece. Alfred what are we left with on our, on our on, off the Alfred bench? off the Alfred bench. Payton, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna you know, be able to keep him? Lamar Peters off the bench. Yeah, okay. Oh, bring him the G- bring, bring Lamar <laughs> off the G League. Lamar Peters, watch the Lamar Peters highlights. Yo, Lamar Peters highlights are filthy. Yo, that step back. You gotta watch that step back game from Lamar Peters, man. It's mm-hmm. filthy. He's filthy. That might be something to look at too. That definitely might be something to look at. Too. Hmm. All right, I just I just threw that out there. Just... No, right. definitely. And, and and so how come they haven't brought him up already then? Because I don't know, to, to be honest with you, I don't know. I mean, we didn't bring no, we didn't bring no brass dingus, right? Again, it, it, it's such questionable moves sometimes, man. I mean, but look who the Knicks got at point guard though. They got, they got Alfred Payton, they got Frank Nilakina, then some of is still on the roster. So, I mean, and they, and they ain't doing nothing with him, so it's like that's three point guards right yeah, it's there. It's a little bit crowded, down and bring it's somebody else yeah. to give them a chance. It's definitely crowded. There's not enough, there's not enough minutes in the world, like half the roster has to be gone for Lamar Peters to even get a uh. A decent shot at being a uh, 
a point guard on the Knicks for sure. Damn. Exactly, and, and we're not even talking about like Alonzo Trent guys exactly. like that too. We, that. we didn't right, mention right. Trent. <laughs> We didn't even mention yes. Knox 11 minutes a game until the last end of this. We didn't even mention that. Like, there's, a lot, there's lots of people. On. We had too many people, man. We had too many people. This is just, it's, it's, it's too many people that are like, I don't want to say immovable, but it's like, where, where do they go? How do I give them their Right, minutes? right, right. So it's like, so if we're looking at that, then what kind of revamping do you think we need to do as a whole? And I think then we can just, you know, that might determine what pieces we go after. Like, what do we need to unload to actually get pieces that are going to make a difference? I mean, that depends. It depends on a lot, man. It's, it's going to depend on the draft. It's going to depend on free agency. Um, it's going to depend, man. That, that's 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 going to be up to the GM to decide. That's it's a me. I mean, I could have my own personal vision. I could have. I could want. You know what I mean? I could, I could want. Um, I could want to bring Joe uh, Ingles here with Christian Wood, and have him with Lamelo Ball, and then roll out with with Lamelo. And Christian Joe. with with RJ and Mitch and go. That could be my vision, but that's just the vision. Y'all see what we have that's just the vision. Things have to fall into place. People have to say no. <laughs> exactly. It's a lot. So wait, wait, Joe Ingles is gonna be a free agent this upcoming oh, yeah. season? Mm-hmm. I mean mm-hmm. oh. Or maybe we just free dot and we just have them start. To, maybe we just do that. I think I think the Knicks organization needs to have an open house. I think that's what they need to do. <laughs> Fire sale, <laughs> open house. They need to have they need to have a Zoom open house, <laughs> and then we need to jump in that and, and 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 just just give some just give some ideas and some insight. Hey, listen, what is what you guys could possibly? Yeah, do. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Uh, or maybe we could bring that Marcus Morris at the four. Don't bring that Marcus. That's going to look. <laughs> <laughs> have no comment. Uh, have no I baited no you, you just so you can comment. Yeah, I know. I ain't got no comment Whatever. for y'all, man. Nah, y'all wanted that man to go. Leave him. <laughs> Thanks wow. for the leave, leave him. Leave him alone. <laughs> leave him alone. Nah, y'all, 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 y'all ain't want him. No, we 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 no, we want him on the squad. It's just that we knew that you know he was very. He was. I wanted to pick, so y'all can't. So y'all don't, exactly. and y'all still won't pick y'all man. Nah, <laughs> that's fine. You can stay in Clippers. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good though. Because you, you sound like a female, Jay. <laughs> Wow, wow. Oh, oh. When, we don't, when we don't get our way, then you be like, fine, that's fine, that's oh. fine. Sound like that's not what she said. All right, whatever. <laughs> oh, whoa, where we, where we going? I don't right know. Now? I was happy when it left, so I have to go right. Where are we going? <laughs> I, I was trying to go moving on. <laughs> moving on. Marcus wants to come back. Here we go. <laughs> Moving on. I... <laughs> Tom Thibodeau. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Tibbs, man. Tibbs has been all over the news, man. It's been all over the reveal. First and foremost, it started out that Tibbs was uh, rumored to have interest from a few teams, those teams being the New York Knicks, uh, the New Jersey Nets, the Rockets, and the Rockets, and the Houston Rockets. Mm-hmm. And then... After that piece of news broke, uh, somebody from ESPN comes out and says, oh, Mike, Mike Wilbin says that Tom Tibble would choose the Knicks over the Nets and the Houston Rockets. <laughs> That's exciting. That's mm-hmm. exciting yeah. to hear. And then, and then he said. And then, of course, he was like, oh, this is all rumors. And. You know, right? Everything mm-hmm. is rumors and yeah. hearsay, mm-hmm. and but he's supposed, I mean, to, say, he's supposed to say that, right? No, I mean, well, yes, he's like my agent is taking care of that, and I, you know, okay, cool, I get it. But um, I mean, that'd be a good look, man. That'd be a good look. Um, I think we need that type of leadership in in the culture the Knicks are trying to trying to develop. Mm-hmm. I do like the fact that he's willing to be flexible with the way that the league is changing and how. You know, because I know he's not big on load management. So wait, so wait, how, wait, why, where, why would you, okay, so you're saying he's flexible. What are you getting this information from? Come on, try to set it up. Oh, <laughs> where am I getting this information from? It is an interview that he had okay. on First Take, and they were asking him about how does he feel about, well, they asked him why is it that him, a, co- a coach with such, you know, high skill sets, um, 
gets fired or can't really seem to hold on to a job. Um, I think a lot of the I think a lot of the problems is 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 him not being or maybe in the past he hasn't been as flexible right. with certain things. Um, and I think now he's willing to be flexible. He wants to coach. He understands, you know, young guys need to get different coaching than some of the veterans, mm-hmm. the low management and those types of things that he does not really has not really been a part of his coaching framework. I think he's willing to like acquiesce a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay, so do you believe him? <laughs> uh not really, to be honest. <laughs> I think he's saying what he needs to say to get the job because that's what you're supposed to do. Hey, don't we? <laughs> and then when you get the job, uh, grow. You know, hire me. <laughs> grow. What you? What you want? What do you want me to do? Right. I, I think. What, what do you want me to say? For example, my dad was was uh he's in a, he was an accountant, and his friend was like, "Yo, here's what you're supposed to say to get the job." My dad was yeah. stubborn and didn't do that. Said his own thing and didn't get it and was upset because he didn't get the job. Listen. Right? But he wasn't upset that he didn't say what he needed to right, say. Right, of course. Listen, right. I told my job I can code. <laughs> right. But listen, but that's what I'm saying. You're supposed to do it. And then when you get in on the job, you figure it yeah. out. So I think yeah. Thibodeau's trying to get the job. Mm-hmm. And when he gets in, he's going to create the culture between himself and the players. Mm-hmm. And they're going to work it out. I, I'm not mad yeah. at him. I, w- I would love him to come. You would love him. I mean, listen, I think- Tom Thibodeau, Nick fans don't like him. They don't want him um, because, you know, because of that, you know, that the little... That's the you know that's what I'm saying. Like I think the the, the Knicks need a uh, they need a kick in the pants, man. To be honest, in my opinion, maybe we need a coach that we don't like. Maybe that's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Listen, we've been getting best, a lot of coaches best, that we you know, like. No, we haven't. We had. didn't like. We yeah, didn't. we wanted Phil. We like we Phil. Wanted, we, we wanted Phil. Coaches, though. We talking about coaches. We like Fitz. Listen, that was we got. Him. We, we yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, we like him. We 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 still like him. Yeah, we like. No. No, I know. Just nah. said, we kind of, I was okay with it. That's no, people were cool with Jeff Hornacek. Listen, Fisher, I was Think like, about, what the hell was this? Think about <laughs> the teachers that got you the best grades and got you to actually learn the something. Asshole. You did not like them. And Tom mm. Thibodeau is an asshole, so we may be... <laughs> we yeah. need that. That's what I'm saying. We might need that. Yo, but the hip, listen. The hip, but here's my only concern, though, with Tom Thibodeau. Uh-huh. Because if you look at his track record, like, all the years he's done well, He's had veterans. Like, there's really no great track record mm-hmm. of him with young players. Even, even in Minnesota, like, the one season where he got Minnesota to the playoffs, when he had Jimmy Butler on the squad with all those young dudes, they were doing good. And they were, like, the fourth seed, I think, in the West. And then right. Jimmy got hurt. Then they kind of fell off. And then from there, it was wait, like... Wait, wait, wait. Ryan, was, Ryan, don't worry. We're going to have Taj Gibson here. <laughs> Taj Gibson ain't no Jimmy Butler, though. <laughs> he said veterans. <laughs> veterans, he's familiar. Hey, friends. <laughs> friends. Nah, Todd we will well, well, when, yeah, when I say friends. veteran, I mean a veteran that can actually make a difference, all right? He's like, oh, he, he oh Josh, guys, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not your man. Josh. He made a yeah. difference. He coached up Mitch. He, he, he turned from a boy to a man. Wow. Like, boys to man. Wow. No, no. Tom Thibodeau needs an actual good playing veteran who's averaging at least like 20 a game to at least turn the team around. I'm not oh. sure if he can, I'm going to be a coach a bunch of young players and coach. That's, that's, the thing, that's the thing I'm not sure about. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, um, what's his name? Be that guy. Who? We know it's him. I forgot. His name. <laughs> 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 not Wayne. Oh man. Not Wayne. All right. Disregard. I mean, personally, I gotta think of personally, I'm, I'm still going for Miller. Bring back Miller or well, Kenny Atkinson, yeah. but I mean, yeah, yeah, I can see it. Mark Jackson said he's still interested. Free Mark Jackson. Is there a cricket button? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was on, he was on first take this week saying that he was interested. Why you why you don't? He's he's been interested. At yeah, he said he's still yeah. interested. He wants to coach again. It's nice. He's, exactly. he's interested in the Knicks. Free Mark, and Jackson. he has um good uh young player development. We have a great G League team. Yeah. Yeah. So he's that's also got feel, some Jay? interesting that's life it. thoughts. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> so no, great yeah, respect G-League Sunday. Team. That's, I, that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's I know Mark Jackson. I got you. Free Mark Jackson. 
G League team is awesome. All right, Ryan, Ryan gonna be going to Sunday Yo, service. I'm telling man. you, man. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna have Mark Jackson. He's gonna have all the kids up there with Kanye in there. Trust me. Keep, 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 <laughs> right. keep, uh, keep the Sunday holy. Exactly. But my thing, my thing with bringing Tom Thibodeau here too is, uh, if Tom Thibodeau comes to be New York Knicks, say goodbye to any dreams of Cat coming to New York. That's dead. Mm. I'm okay with that. You don't want, you don't like your name is Kathy. You don't like cat. <laughs> <laughs> but let me choose my words wisely. I'm actually gonna step out because you um, cat his his mom his mom passed from corona, right? Yeah. yeah oh, so I ain't got nothing to say. Right. <laughs> yeah, I ain't got nothing to say. I'm exiting. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, let, that's yeah, an all star average is 20 and 10. Like, why would why would we not want that? <laughs> he said, I mean, the only real thing wrong with Cat is his defense is that atrocious. To the yeah, point where he averaged that. 20 and 10 and they're still struggling. He's like, he's had the like the best offensive season of like any modern center ever. And it's still, his defense was so bad right. that they didn't win that many games. Which is why I think pairing him with Mitch would be awesome. Mm. This is like clogged up that yeah, efficiency. Be... Keep scoring, right. and let's keep it moving. Oh, so the next version of Twin Towers. Next version of Twin Towers. That's, that's not a bad. That wouldn't be that bad. I don't think that'd be bad. Mm. But you say if Tom comes here, that that's that's uh-huh. a dub. Maybe I don't know. I'm dreaming. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe that's too too big. Too, too big. Gotta wait and see. All right. <laughs> All right. Moving on. All right. This topic, man. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's do it. All right. Let's do All it. Right. Let's get uh. serious. Listen. Nick of Time Show, Originators, Roll with Oakley, Hard, right? Nick right. Facts, mm-hmm. Nope Shirt Designed by Jay o- Ellis. Oak Shirt Designed by Jay Ellis, years ago, Oakley, you know, Nick's hero, legend, tossed out of the garden, does commercials for eyeglasses, embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Embarrassed. Video video comes out him pushing security guards. I myself I saw an extended video of the security guard stalking him for all before the push. So to me it was even like, damn, he seemed like he was getting harassed. But that's a whole other story about the extended video that doesn't didn't get circulated. But whatever. I felt like half you know a lot of Knicks fans were rallying around him when that happened. Right. At least half of them, anyway, including us. Since then, it's been a rocky relationship with Charles Oakley and the Knicks fans. Rumors of him, you know, uh, luring free agents to Brooklyn, mainly uh, Kevin Durant. Me and CP actually we did an interview talking to Charles Oakley, and I, I asked him. We asked him, was like, "Yo, are you, are you luring other free agents to Brooklyn?" And he didn't really answer the question. Wow. And so, you, you know, when you don't answer the question, sometimes not answering the question is... Sometimes not answering is an answer. Yeah. Boom. Mm. <sighs> Damn. Yeah, Oak. and on top of that, if you watch that interview, that Oakley interview, it was, woo. It was interesting. It was, it was, he was compatible, to say the least. You can say, you know, that's how he speaks. That's how he speaks to me. Speaking to that man, he just seemed hurt, for real. Like, he seemed like a hurt dude. Um, and... You could tell he's hurt. You can still tell he's hurt by the way he's talking about Patrick Ewing. Because I feel like a lot of the people who follow the post-game live show, Nick and Tom show, Nick Spain to DCP, they were already off Oakley, and I was still kind of holding on to hope. But once they saw the interview and they saw how he interacted with us, a lot of the a lot of the people were just like, "What what's happening here?" They they like further mm. resolved because they felt like. He was compatible with us when we were trying to ask him questions. Um, hmm. And then the last dance drops. Right. And then he talks about comments with Patrick Ewing. Uh, do you have anybody who has the comments? I have the comments. All right. So I'm going to read from um, a New York Post article 
written by Mark Berman, of course. Okay. So these are some of the comments that Charles Oakley said. Patrick, at the end of the game, he'd get double teamed. He'd shoot fadeaways on double teams, and that hurt us as a team. He went on to say, my thing with Jordan is, it's not like you beat us by 20. Most games went down to two, three possessions. Y'all made shots. We didn't. The best player won. Michael was a better player than Patrick, hands down. So there's no debate there. No, but still, you got to say it like that, though. Well, well, the debate is when they're playing different positions to understand. If they're they're talking about superstar for superstar, yes. But it's a team sport, though. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose by two points. Hit a free throw, Charles. Or <laughs> that 15 footer. You see what I'm saying? So it's not uh, just Patrick. How do you want to hit the gun? Just... How do you want to hit the gunshot? All right, go. <laughs> Come on, dude. You can't you can't just blame Patrick for that. Oh man, this guy's about to get me hot. You can't just blame yeah. Patrick for that. But but he went on though. So um he also made a comment about Pat Riley. Okay. Saying that Pat Riley never adjusted to the situation. At halftime, we did the same thing. They trapped us full court. We never did nothing like that to trap them and make them think about That's the game. True. Yeah, and then when he went on to say, we didn't make shots and played into their hands. With defense, they played a zone and built a wall. They knew Patrick wasn't going to pass out of the double team. Phil watched a lot of film. We watched a lot of film. But we were playing checkers and they were playing chess. Let me see what else did he say. Why isn't it that and it's more so a a a, a shot to Patrick? Like okay, anybody on the- you know what else too? Because I recently rewatched some of those series games because I um, definitely checked the Nick Time Show. We interviewed Xavier McDaniel's on, on um on YouTube Live, which was an amazing interview. And I'll say this about Patrick Ewing: Oakley's complaining about him not getting the ball. First of all, Oakley can't dribble and couldn't dribble and shoot up. Let's just, let's <laughs> the first of all, okay, right? let's let's talk. He about couldn't it. dribble too <laughs> Love the man. He was a harder team. He did things, but offensively, he's in the net. I'm sorry. He caught. He, he grabbed rebounds mm-hmm. and occasionally hit the 50. Right. That's what he yeah. And if you listen to that Xavier Midan interview that we, we talked about, his own teammate, who's who he's actually cool with. Oak, he himself was like, "Yo, he couldn't even hit layups. Like he would miss layups." We, <laughs> we know that. We saw that. We saw so, that. But the other thing I want to say about that too is. We watching those games on YouTube and whatever. Patrick Ewan passed the ball a lot, a mm-hmm. lot. He passed out the double teams a lot. I remember I was watching some games where this is core. He, he just passed. He just straight looked for the open man and passed. But who was he passing to? Nobody. Right. Nobody. Nobody. The years. Could you blame him though? Oh, Could breaking. you blame Patrick? We, he needed to win can you? More. Can you? Can you blame Patrick? Yo, Michael been his kryptonite since the forevers. <laughs> Michael's been everybody's kryptonite in the damn night. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is, Knicks have taken him to Game Seven and it, taking the Bulls to Game Seven. The thing is, too, when they were able to take him to Game Seven, I feel like Patrick was had more help. When X Man was there, he had at least X Man was able to shoot. And besides mm-hmm. him, though, we had like John Starks. Mm-hmm. No one can shoot, so it was like Patrick had help. I mean, he went. Jordan had help. Jordan had passes. Yeah, right. Jordan had shooters. Right. Patrick, and yeah. remember when when Jordan? I mean, I mean, had Pippen. Jordan had Pippen, <laughs> who couldn't really shoot, That's but still saying. he helped. <laughs> and 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 when Jordan didn't have help, he didn't win. Like he was losing when he didn't have help. Yeah. So Patrick oh. Ewing had some more reluctance. Because again, Starks is an is, is a good shooter, but he was streaky at times. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying so it's like. Three of nineteen. Come on. Three of nineteen. Don't that's my guys. Guys. Don't But also me. also when 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 um when everybody started crowding Jordan or everybody used to start double che- teaming Jordan, the coach knew, all right, look, we gotta get the ball out of your hands and you gotta learn to tr- trust your teammates. Exactly. And his other teammates knew that they had to learn to step up. Who was gonna step up? You can't blame just Patrick. Why didn't you step up? True. I mean, and I don't got nothing against oh, don't get me wrong. No matter it does to me, 
I don't really care what he says. He's a different type of breed. Like OGs are different. They really stand by whatever code they mm-hmm. got. So he gonna live and die on. Oh, he's, he's dying on that. Yeah. <laughs> he's dying. It's so it's it ain't really much to debate. You know what I'm saying? Think, but just even Patrick ain't taking him serious. Patrick, I mean, I still love Charles. Oakley. Yeah, Everybody's man. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. You know. Yeah, because I'm I'm pretty sure Oakley didn't hold back how he was feeling, and he said it to him. Uh, 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 I'm I'm sure he said it to him. Um, like, you and- didn't double pat pass me the ball. Like, you ain't hitting shit. So why am I passing it to you? But you know what? It, you know what? It, you know what the difference is too. It was different when when he, when because Oak is pissed that Patrick Hewitt never stood up for him when he got kicked out of the garden. That's where all this is coming from. That, but that oh, mm-hmm. listen, whenever th- that's what I think the wound starts from. You know, it's like when you're with somebody, oh, they can do no wrong, and then when you're not with them, well, they haven't back you up. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, everything they did wrong is magnified, and you remember that. I feel like that's what is happening mm-hmm. with Oakley. He he wanted Patrick Ewing to back him up. He felt as though Patrick didn't have his back. So now he's like, all right, well, here's how I really feel about the situation mm-hmm. and, and, and all this ugliness, you know. Yeah, yeah and, and also I do want to point out, like, a few more things to defend Patrick Ewing in that whole 93 series against the Bulls. First and foremost, I want to read the last comment because – that quote is the one that really, um... <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's yeah. <laughs> Okay, so he said, the Bulls had Michael and we had Patrick. Here we go. It's like seeing Beyonce and going to see someone trying to be Beyonce. Come on! That's a so good good Hold on. <laughs> I want to know who he meant as trying to be Beyonce. I, I needed him yeah. to name drop. I, I kind of needed him to name drop. He's calling Patrick the fake How Beyonce. How did he call him but who, like, which female, How you know? <laughs> wow! And, and, and I wanted to know wow. the levels here. Who exactly right, 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 right. are you? Do you mean when you say right. fake Beyonce? Who, 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 who is the fake Beyonce? Beyonce? Who are you talking it's about? Probably, probably Michelle. But um, uh, then he went on to say, if Beyonce is in town, everybody's going to see Beyonce. If Michael and Patrick are in town, everyone is going to see Michael. They had the show. We tried to stop them. We couldn't stop them. Okay, that last part was true. But everything yeah, but was OD. If, if, if Michael and Patrick are in town, we we'll see. Ah, no, nah, well, that wasn't entirely true. That was not. Yes, there were definitely people that were there to see Michael, but there was clearly people there to see Patrick. Uh, I, I see, to see them play saying. against each other too. Yeah, I think I think it's unfair, man. Patrick been, like I said again, Michael been busting Patrick's ass since college, man. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, like in college, you busting my ass. I go to the league, you busting my ass. Now my teammate is no. Yo. I can't say that. You know why? It's it's easy. It's because they play different positions, yo. They play different. When you want that, don't mean you didn't get your ass. Because it's different, different when you have like the guard, the same like the center and the yeah. Center. But it's like my team is busting your team. Yes. from college to the yeah. league. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, That's Edson. Thank you, Edson. Like the team, the team. <laughs> Thank you, Edson. Because Bill Cartwright you get... wasn't busting yes. Patrick Hewitt's ass. Not at all. Nah. <laughs> Not at all. Patrick nah. was busting Bill's ass. <laughs> Easy. Easy. But, yo, but I- I'm just going to read these stats right quick because this is the guy that Charles Oakley put the loss on in 93 um, series against the Bulls. This was Patrick Ewing's stats that whole series. In six games, Patrick, Patrick Ewing averaged 25.8 points per game, 11.2 rebounds Come per on. game. 1.8 blocks. On. <laughs> what more you want him to do? Like, hey. <laughs> what more can I say? Yo, drop the mic on me. You, you want yo, him to do what Michael's doing. What do you want him to do? What Michael's doing. Do what Michael's doing. Make a layup. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, I got to Do what Michael's I, I, wait, doing. How, how, tall, gotta, how tall was Charles Oakley? Like what? 6'8", maybe? 6'8", 6'9", about? Wow. You, you're, you're quite close to the basket. You're quite close to the basketball. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand why you had a hard time in the layup. Oh my God. <laughs> and, also, and also, here's another stat to um to um kind of defend Patrick Ewing as well, which I also yeah, got. Come, yo, come through stats and the facts, man. Come. <laughs> so this is what it read. In Patrick Ewing's 15 years with the Knicks, four times he played with somebody who made the all-star team that come year. Come on, man. Four times. Mark, Mark Jackson in 89. Oak and Starks in 94, Allen Houston in 2000. Ewing himself made it 11 times. And here's a comparison with other superstars during his era that, that you know, were, you know, special that era and, and the years that they played with yeah, all Yeah, by the time Allen Houston got there, he was too old. But you continue. Yeah. <laughs> Carl Malone, right. 
Carl Malone, 12 seasons as a, with an all-star teammate in Utah. Obviously, John Stockton. Right. Charles Barkley, nine times with Philadelphia, three times with no Phoenix. Help. Miller, nine times. Chris Mullen, eight times with Golden help State. <laughs> David Robinson, seven times. Gary Payton, seven times with help Seattle. Him, Hakeem Olajuwon, seven times with Houston. Mm. I Drexel, seven times with Portland. Oops. Alonzo Mourning, three times with Miami and two times with Charlotte. Mm. Help me. Help me. And this one pisses me off about the X-Men interview, too, because the X-Men was supposed to sign with the Knicks, and they would have actually had a score to kind of pair with Patrick. Mm-hmm. And the Knicks dropped the ball then, too. Like, the Knicks were playing games with his money. They were pretending like they was going to re-sign him, and they end up not re-signing him. Definitely watch that interview, because it's a really, really good interview. But they could have got Patrick some help. They could have yeah. got. They could have kept the X Men and started trying to get. They try to get James Worthy, but that's a whole other story. Definitely watch the interview. I'm dropping too many gems. Watch the interview. <laughs> but long story short, Pat need help, and it's not Pat's fault. I think we had a, just yeah. We had we had a team full of role players at the time. Yeah, um, and we love the role players because they got us through some hard times. Um, we got, we, we got, you know, do the playoffs finals with role like players that. and Patrick Ewing, but it just seems yeah. like that's the Knicks identity. Oh. But the only thing now is we don't have like that one standout, um, star that can, you need yeah. a Robin, the role you need a Robin. We just, right now we just have role players. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much, <laughs> you know, and a promising rookie who had a good, you know, a good first season, like, you know. Um. Yeah, we we need to have. That's what we need. Exactly. And I, I you know, so it's 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 not sad. Like I think Kathy's like, this is just how OGs behave. But it's like, I understand Oak is a little salty. But <sighs> you can't you can't put that you can't put that loss on on Patrick. Like that's silly. Mm-hmm. You can't. Yeah. It's silly. Yeah, man. I I still got love for Oak, man. But I can't I can't back him like I used to. Oak. It's gotten mm-hmm. it's gotten crazy. Ah, uh, it hurts. Well, you gonna retire the shirt? Oh, yo, you gotta you gotta use it to clean. That's your cleaning I'm shirt now. The shirt, man. I have to get the shirt. The shirt, the shirt, the shirt was up because I believed yeah. in the shirt. <laughs> Uh, that's your cleaning clean shirt. Crap. You gotta use that. All. You gotta wear that <laughs> on the Sunday. Oh, my cleaning shirt is my cleaning shirt right now. Uh, nah, you gotta throw that away. It's my cleaning shirt. Oh, my, no, I got I got grease stains on there. I, oh, you use it like as a yeah. I use it in my kitchen, like the, the dead after. Yeah, that's, yeah, that should that should disrespect it. I mean, that's okay. Yeah. It's still disrespectful. Right. <laughs> 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 All right. <sighs> all right. Moving on. Since we talking about we getting all nostalgic and stuff like that, you know, we might as well get. Yes. We gonna touch on some stuff. We gonna touch on listen. 1970. It's it's the 50th anniversary of the Knicks winning its first chip. Do we have we have the applause effects, right? Do we, do we have the applause effects? We do have the applause. <laughs> do I remember what button the applause effects is off the top? Well, let's figure it no. out. We need to give that some applause. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the bra. Hold on. No, that's no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we're just gonna go with the clap. We're just gonna go. <laughs> yeah, we, just, we, 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 we already did it. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna, gonna hear all sorts of madness when the show airs. I can hear the effects now, but we're gonna hear all sorts of madness. Yeah, I'm not. We're not all worried right. about that. <laughs> but um, yes, the Knicks assembled a, a team of greats. Ah, oh, man, our leader, leader Willis Reed, Walt Frazier. Yes. Oh yeah, Walt had the oh. mean, mean game. game. Game seven, Walt oh. Frazier, uh, Dave the Busher. Yes. Uh, Dick Barnett and Bill Bradley, who was the great White Hope back in the day. If you, you know, <laughs> White Hope. He was the great White Hope back in the day. Definitely, definitely watched um that thirty for thirty on ESPN when the Garden was eating. Definitely watched that man. I actually caught some of the um old school games too, when they when they, that they on show the MSG on Friday. I actually caught a, um some of that uh, game. <laughs> you saw them balls? Yeah, I, I caught the tail end. <laughs> yeah, man. Like we need to be if you watch if you watch those games. Oh, also, Knicks legend Phil Jackson was on that. <laughs> of course, you can't forget. You can't forget <laughs> Knicks legend. You cannot forget Knicks legend Phil Jackson on that squad. Oh man, it was so interesting how they were talking about 
why he was able to relate to Rodman so much because he was like a fucking hippie himself. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh yeah. It's like okay, I see you, Phil. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. okay. Also, don't forget about today is the day that the Knicks won their second championship. That's right. Hey. That same week. <laughs> shout out, yo! Shout out to the Knicks. Hopefully, bring some of that magic, that that magic back. Shining glory back. We need that. Yeah, yeah, man. It was if you if you have not if, again if you have not watched if, when the Garden was in, please watch that. It was a great story. Uh, kind of details the Knicks battle with the Lakers, how we had to overcome the Celtics. Um, mm -hmm. The famous game where, uh, first of all, the game where Willis Reed goes down with a leg injury after he was going back and, and forth playing. and looked like we lost all hope. And then the game mm -hmm. when Willis Reed limps back on the court. It's crazy. To inspire all crazy. his teammates and strike fear into the eyes of Los Angeles Lakers that inspired. Mm -hmm. What? He's still playing? Inspired that game. Yes. By Wall of Fire Clyde Frazier. Stats and facts, man. Do you have the, do you, I bet you have the stats. Do you have the stats for that game? Walk Clyde Frazier? Off the top of my head, I think I recall Walt Clyde Frazier having 36 points. Mm -hmm. Okay. 19 Ooh. assists. Ooh. And seven rebounds off the top of my head. Those are numbers. Ah, this is why you the stats and facts. This is why you the stats and facts. <laughs> <laughs> Knicks win game seven. To win our first championship 50 years ago. Congratulations to your Knicks. Bring some of that same magic and that same that same for you. I also want Julius Randle to watch that too. <laughs> uh, yo, what yo, I mean, it's just, it's just the fact that we have Cl Walt Clyde Frazier doing all of our games. Like, yo, you can't bring some of you can't bring some of that magic to the court, man. man. Like, listen, he does every time he puts he got, he got, he got somebody, man. I want I want to see somebody else in the Knicks uniform give me 36 and 19. Facts. Somebody else. But the big the big thing I even took from that team was um was the ball movement. The ball movement was was top notch. Red Holden taught, taught ball movement. And everybody was unselfish. It was never about the first pass that was the first shot that was available. It was the first, second, third, and fourth. And everybody trusted each other. And Julius Randle, man, trust him, trust, him, trust, him, trust. Him. I, I think that's at the core of it. It's about trust. You think yeah. about any team that actually does well. Think about that Golden State team with even with Kevin Durant on it. Everybody touched the ball. Mm -hmm. The ball moved. Mm -hmm. and everybody at any given point was good. You had so many ballers on that team. Even on a team with a bunch of role players, I guarantee the Knicks have their greatest games when they pass the ball. Right. You know, but yeah. Randall, you know, he kind of muddies the game up at times. Big facts. Didn't move Rand. Big facts. But definitely, definitely watch that game. Happy 50 years to the Knicks. Yes. He won. <laughs> what's what's, what's what went in 51? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I just don't need it to be another fifty yeah, years. No, like, I don't see yeah, no, <laughs> you know we don't want to wait. You got you got you got something to do. We got I mean we got time. Nah, that we ain't got nothing but time. time. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean I would sure hope I would live to see eighty three, but I want a Knicks championship before I'm eighty three though. Yeah, I, I, I still want to be young enough to stroll through the parade. <laughs> Word. <laughs> I'm gonna be strong through that parade at 85. Trust oh, me. Oh, 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 <laughs> at this, at this rate, we are not gonna have parades anymore. Yo, I'm gonna edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see what Kathy just said? I rebuked that name. <laughs> <laughs> it is On Sunday, a Sunday right? yo. <laughs> oh man, Happy Mother's Day to all the moms, man. Hey. Yes, mm -hmm. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, future yeah, mothers, mother's or, and and Kathy, to the future mom. <laughs> I know you, you. I know your child is gonna be well behaved as a mother. Mm. All right. Hey, hey, mm, 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 let's see. I'm already scared. Of you. I'm not even a kid. Anyway. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Moving on. All right. So now it is time for the favorite part of the show. Favorite part of the show. The ooh picks. Ooh, picks are usually, you know, the best place to be, but there's no more basketball. So... Except for the Michael Jordan doc. Yeah. Right, which is That's all we got. Yeah, yeah that's but Michael Jordan's not getting a ooh on the next podcast. He <laughs> <laughs> can guess, definitely guess get a brother. He can definitely, definitely get a brother. <laughs> all y'all traders, all y'all traders wore Jordans. I never... Mm. I mean, 
mean, I, I mean, according to this doc, there's I, nothing I to ooh him for. Jordan's, bro. Yo, yeah, 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 yeah. I just bought some. <laughs> I just bought some. I'm judging like, all like, of you. Like, like I've always said, I've not denied it. I'm a Knicks fan, but Michael Jordan is my favorite player of all time. I don't. Yeah, get- I'm with I'm with Ryan on that. I'm, I'm with oh, Ryan on that. <laughs> I'm I'm co-signing Ryan on that. So I'm, 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 that. I'm, I'm gonna have to co-sign that as well. Yeah. Like, I gotta- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, but but on this doc, there's nothing to really like ooh him about. It's a lot of bros. Yeah, a lot of bros. That's yeah. That's a lot of bros. That's fine. The ooh pick is. I know we all agree. The ooh pick is going to be Will Clyde Frazier's. Let's clap it up. Let's yeah, clap yeah, it up yeah. Man. MVP like game, game seven, inspired by Willis Reed walking back on one leg, scoring one bucket, and then going home. <laughs> I mean, that should also yeah. be a ooh as well. That that should also be a ooh as well. Yeah, it's definitely a ooh. For the inspiration. Uh, I think I should repeat the stats 36 points, mm. 19 mm. assists, mm. Mm. in a game seven of an of a NBA finals. Yes, that's how you do it. All right, cool. Very short rule. Probably the shortest rule. Right, that's the shortest rule <laughs> ever in history. But now it is time for... It was different, though, too. I realized, too, they didn't have a three-point line. On the nah. It's just a, in, such an interesting time watching games. Yeah. Games. It was. I almost was like, yeah, where the fans at? Because, right. but then I remember, <laughs> I remember these camera angles was a little different. Right, right, I was right, like, right, ooh, right. this this is what they gonna look like when they bring us back. When they bring the new NBA back, it's about to look just like this. Exactly, right. There was no score. Yeah, <laughs> like, yo, the, the Knicks they actually didn't have fans. Like, you know, they never, the Knicks, the New York Knicks wasn't like a a, a big drawing spot before. Mm-hmm. It wasn't mm-hmm. until the Great White Hope got there that the fans actually got there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's like, oh, Bill Bradley's coming. We're gonna come in this, and then yeah, watch the doc. Mm. Trust me. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> on the list, we got time. We got time. Next segment. <laughs> Next segment is also one of the favorite segments of Alex Collins yes. and us. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh picks. Bruh picks. Usually yes. the worst plays of the week, but there's no basketball, so usually we just kind of just do some. You know, this is some bull. Some bull. Wait, do we even have that button? No. Wait. Some oh, bull. Do you have it? Wait, wait, wait. No. I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna try again. Some bull. <laughs> there it is. All right. Do <laughs> 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 you some bullshit? All right. Cool. So, bro, picks anybody? Yeah, I got. Um, well, I'll, I'll I have. Well, I'm, I'm gonna let Roman go flask. I know he's got a. Yeah. Few. I have one. I was watching this video, I think it was on either YouTube or Instagram, and it was if I could dress like Mike. <laughs> everybody in the video, some of the little kids had on a little, that little fedora hat that he wears sometimes. <laughs> to the what about the mom pants? <laughs> big ass shirts Bruh. and the pants that are like three sizes too big. Bruh. What are you doing? Bruh. And it's like, when you think about it, right? On the court, he was like, Ideal fashion. Everybody wanted to dress mm. like him on the court. The gold chains was cool. The court. What's happening here? What's, what's you know happening? what? You know what? He was he was ahead of his time. He was honoring mothers. Yeah. You know, that's all it was. He, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna have to give him a bro for them big ass pants. <laughs> he was, yeah, he, he's honoring yeah. Mothers. He, he gotta let. He gotta let that go. He's honoring let mothers. Go, mother's Day with the mom jeans. Yeah, he's like he's got a Armani blazer up top, and he's like a soccer mom on the bottom. Like, what's <laughs> Man, no. Nah, especially too when he was getting off like a couple good fits every now and again. You can't, you can't, bruh. Your pants, your pants. Right. It's, it's, it was always the pants. pants. Blazers was 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 sharp, and then these pants. What are you doing? <laughs> and even in the twenty twenties, you still got the you still yeah, got the on, whitest son. leg. You got... <laughs> Just want to make sure he had room to breathe because he didn't want a yeast. Right. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> 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 No, let's piggyback off of Michael. Michael get, Michael still gets a bra for wearing them glasses in that doc, in that interview, <laughs> when he said he didn't have a gambling problem. <laughs> like, yo, <laughs> I got a competitive yo, problem. Homie, oh, he's like, he like, oh, I have a gambling problem. Is he said he got a competitive problem. A comp- I, like, I like to compete. If I wanted to stop, I could stop right now. I didn't lose my house. I didn't lose my job. You, bruh. Yo, he Bruh. Like he's like, I bet on, I bet on myself. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my yeah. God. Mind you, mind you, ESPN and Netflix was cool because they showed us all the different ways he was competing and, and gambling before the, before he admitted that he didn't yeah, have he a did. problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they set him up. They're like, so, <laughs> you think you had a problem with your gambling? <laughs> Very well done. It, the, the way they're doing this doc is so smart. They sent a lot of people it's, up. They sent a yeah. lot of people up like, yeah. hey, look, here's what Jordan said about you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yo, yeah, that's really clever though. A lot of us are gonna steal that. That was whoever de- whoever oh, yeah. decided to do oh, that yeah. is oh, super, yeah. super, super smart. I really like this doc. Right. I mean, I'm doing like, they, knew, doc. they knew the answer already. <laughs> As like, oh, Ryan, know here's what you guess. Guess. He said Look at what he said about <laughs> it. Think about that. Nah, the difference is I'm gonna tell Ryan to his face. Ryan's gonna be like, I said I saw this ring. Episode 45. Ryan's gonna be like, I was yeah, I was there. I was there. I was there. Oh man. Any uh, other bro, bro, uh, bro man from the fifth floor, what you got? Well, I guess my first bro is going to go to um, Michael Jordan again. <laughs> but, um, there was a report that came out earlier this week that said that every time Horace Grant had a bad game, Michael Jordan said you couldn't eat. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically when he was serving the team, Michael Jordan, was, Michael Jordan told the server, he can't eat. He had a bad game. Damn, yo. Damn, That's son. crazy. Mean. You low key. We, I mean, yo, Mike was really walling on. Like he was walling. Yes, he was. A, listen, he was a different yeah. animal. And he, when they took, when, when you know, that's why people don't really understand what it means to win at all. Yeah, mm-hmm. crazy. Michael Jordan's like, I'm winning at all. Call. I don't care about French. Yep. I don't care about none of that. I'm yeah. winning. Yes. I want to. I, I mean, I won't actually do it. I might have to re, like rethink my shade towards LeBron because Michael's a different type of beast. But That's what I'm saying. he's a winner <laughs> still. But uh, yeah, Imagine but that. it's a LeBron different type LeBron of winning. Is, now. is at mm. that level, Imagine and LeBron that, has bro. LeBron has genuine compassion. You know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. why I like LeBron as a person, though. Not really as a basketball player. See, yeah, I think as a person, that's why I fuck with Mike as that. a basketball player. I like LeBron as a person. Yeah, Yo, yeah, that's crazy. Yo, Ryan, give me your rights, man. I didn't like the way you pod today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, one more bro, though. One more bro. Okay. Michael Jordan again. <laughs> because th- there was another incident. I think it's going to be on tonight. But I saw, like, a clip of it, though, where he was in practice. And and I think they were going back and forth, like, him and Steve Kerr or whatnot. And he was saying that Phil Jackson was calling Tiki Tack files. He was getting pissed off. So then he said, so he said on like the next possession, Steve Kerr had the ball, he fouled him hard. And he was like, and then he shot at Phil Jackson, like, yeah, that's a real foul or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, was and he then, lying though? Yeah, and then Steve Kerr got mad because Steve Kerr was like, I'm competitive myself. I just can't prove it because I'm not good enough. And then he said that he proceeded to push Michael Jordan, right. like, Yo, no problem. Mm-hmm. And then Michael Jordan punched him in the face. Yeah. Damn. And got kicked out of practice. Yeah. <laughs> wow! All right, Kerr, you did better than Tony because Tony, Tony didn't, Tony couldn't fight back. Tony saw. Stop. <laughs> Tony wasn't even. Tony, Tony was across seas. He didn't even know there was any smoke for him. <laughs> right, right, him. exactly. He didn't know Tony what, know what to do. <laughs> Shout out to Steve. He was like, "What uh. is all this aggression? What is this?" <laughs> <laughs> I thought y'all did this for fun. <laughs> But wait, but wait, hold up though. Tony deserves some props though because in the second game, um, in the in the Olympics when he faced the U.S. again, he actually showed up though. Yeah, it's funny because it's like he showed up and then they showed the score. It's like mm. and he lost my. <laughs> 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 I was like, so that's a show. Did he really? <laughs> yeah. Kudos, fifteen points. Yeah, wow. I, yeah, they still got smacked, but at least he put up points. Yeah, points. 15, 16, <laughs> yeah. admirable. Yeah. Well, I mean, right, you, you check it out. All right. all right, y'all. That is our show. Successful episode of the Nick of Time show, man. Hope the sound is better for you guys. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be tight if it doesn't. Oh, yeah. I'm mean, super tight. Super tight. But I think it's... Yeah. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's it. So, you can definitely find me... At J Ellis draws things is J E L I S draws things and I draw things and yeah I've been more actively lately so I'm not as boring as I usually am so take advantage of this time some, <laughs> exactly I saw you some putting some throwback drawings up yeah put yeah. some throwback drawings oh I found this old drawing I did of you at Tim I think I'm about to post that oh yeah that's gotta go up <laughs> <laughs> man I had to stay judge you at some twice I drew a space for your album 
And then and then the, and then the gift that yeah, I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna throw that back up. So definitely check out my Jayla's draws things things. You can see some more stuff up there. Uh, who do I go to next? Um K Steel. Mm-hmm. Um underscore Kathy Steel. K T H Y S T E E L E. Mm-hmm. Not posting stuff, but I'm on there. She's on there. You just go to the stories. That's what you see the vibes. You see the vibes. <laughs> you see the vibes. <laughs> yes, we catch all the music. I, I am working on some stuff though. So I mean it'll come s- sooner than later. All right, blue check. Me and the homies, yeah, me and the homies got some things working. Black okay. Blue check so. back in the works. Good, good, good. Nah, I'm man. I'm I'm just trying to be lazy and sleep during this quarantine, but it ain't working. <laughs> nah, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make moves just in time. Nah, I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> I, don't know yeah, I know. I'm trying to binge watch you, TV and sleep. Is, exactly. <laughs> love your bed and your mama. I get it. Yeah. Sorry, I got it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to be real about it, I mean, Kathy better get to sleep now because when she had them kids, it's not going to be. Mm. Gonna be right. <laughs> See, Ryan? It's See, right. you get it, though. You get it, though. Ryan, you got to get as much sleep Ryan, now as possible. Yeah. See, he get it. The he get it. will be meek and be, yeah. Mm-hmm. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Where can they find you, Edson? <laughs> they can find me everywhere at Edson Sean, E-D-S-O-N-S-E-A-N. I'm going to be actually dropping an EP in like the next two, three weeks. Oh! So, uh, three song EP. Yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned. <laughs> right. Let's go, E. Who's gonna, who's gonna guest on that? <laughs> all this, all this, oh, well, well, you'll see. I, I got some more stuff. features you got on that. <laughs> <laughs> got the method on them? Oh, never mind. All right. <laughs> method man on there? I don't know. Not yet. Oh, Not yet. I'm working Uh-oh. on that next, so. though. Woo, Taylor. The whole week you got. All right. 36 changes on Yahoo. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Where can they find you, Ryan? They go find me at Sir G is chilling. Yeah. Sir G is chilling. My bad. I was S-I-R. weak. <laughs> Almost forgot it, but it's okay. You recovered real well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's S I R G is C H I L L I N. My IG is pretty much dead right now since quarantine, so ain't much, ain't much to see on there anyway. Yeah. And I got, I got one more thing to say. I think I deserve a thank you, Welcome. because, no, 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 from Kathy because. Oh. Last episode. I was gonna say from who? <laughs> <laughs> because last her face episode, was like. <laughs> I actually, I actually shout out her IG for her, and she wasn't on the. Oh, oh yeah, he yeah, did. he did, he did, he did. He did. He did. Yes, <laughs> and he got it right without now looking. looking. He know, he know it. Oh, that's dumb. Yeah, I'm gonna cut you some slack next next episode. Damn, that's, that's the that's the all, all you get. All you get is one episode. Same energy straight throughout. The story I cut. Thank all, you? I cut. Yeah, yeah. I cut all the last hour. I'm. A, I'm. A, I, I got you next episode. I'm a shout I'm out not, to IG. You know what that means, nice. Ryan? You know what that means, Ryan? You got to come up with the straight jokes next week because she can't say no. <laughs> oh boy! You sure you want to play that card, Ryan? Is that the card you want to play? <laughs> don't do it. I'm, tell, I'm, tell, I'm telling you right now. Are don't you do sure? it. No, you already I mean, said it. It's too late. <laughs> no, no, I don't take it back. I don't take it back. I next next episode, I'm gonna be yeah, nice. Ryan, right? You, I'm right but if you cut you. on me, <laughs> I'm right for jokes for you. I don't know, man. Go to Kathy anyway. One or two every episode anyway, almost. Yeah, yeah. I got All right. Kathy. Well, I'm listen, right for you, you, make, you, you make your bed, Ron. You just <laughs> Yeah, 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 That's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been working on it. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is our show. Definitely, definitely, definitely check it out on all social medias. Biggitimeshow.com. Shout out to Ken. You've been writing a lot for us. She's pulling it down. Um, Thank you, Ken. Maybe this episode should be on SoundCloud. The sound is better. Put, throw this one on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, all that other stuff. Um, fingers crossed, fingers, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, and also yeah. check us on all social media too at um, the KOT Show on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And the Nick I actually Show also saw some Podbean on Instagram. I downloaded Podbean and I was like, let me see if we're, and we're on there too as well. So. Oh, yes, we are hey. on Podbean. Yo, Edson, we, we out here, oh, yo. Everywhere. Yeah, no, I heart. I, I see There's it. some other stuff I'd be forgetting that we on, we on stuff. Yeah, Just listen, moving. I see it. I see it. Working, working. All right, that's it. That is our show. Peace. Peace. York, New York, big city of dreams. I'm coming, coming, I'm coming straight out. New York, New York, big city of dreams. The Nick of Time Podcast.